G'day, fellas, and welcome to a casted game. I tell you what, it's... Uh, uh, how many casted games has it been? And I still can't get away with saying a casted game without crackling up. So thank you very much. Uh, I think it's Rover. Big shout out to Rover, who every game is posting. Or every video that I post is... <laughs> he, he posts the custard emote. And then if it's, a, it's, if it's a video where I don't say custard game, he'll post a little... The no sign, like the, the cancel sign with custard, dude. Oh, man, he cracks me up. I was laughing so hard. So big shout out to Rover here, my number one custard fan. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number three between Vortex and Kaio. If you missed the first two, well, I've spoiled the results for you. If you want to go back and watch them, then make sure you do go back and watch them. They'll be the two games uploaded immediately before this one. So you'll know exactly which games I'm talking about. But uh, yes, we are currently 1-1 one, one in this series between Vortex and Kaio. The winner of this will be going through into the winner's round. Uh, the loser goes through to guess where? Guess where they go, fellas? They go through to the loser's round. Uh, so this is a double bracket elimination tournament. Uh, double, I, th I think so. I, double bracket. It, it is a, a double bracket, double elimination tournament. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's, but look, come come check it out. We're going to be live over on Twitch this weekend. Make sure you do not miss it. Don't miss it for the world, all right? I mean, well, I mean, if you if you got stuff on, I mean. Don't worry about it. It's fine. But if you if you're just chilling out, I mean, if you if you're just hanging out and having a good time, why not come have a good time with us? It's going to be live uh, over on the EGC TV channel. I want you to come say good day. Uh, so it'll be live this weekend, 15 GMT, uh, Saturday, Sunday for the next eight weeks, or at least nine weeks, or ten weeks. I don't actually know how many weeks it's going to be. I just know it's going to be a lot. So uh, yeah, come hang out. But uh, well, spawning in over on the uh, the east side of the map. Finally, I'm getting to it. Introducing the players. We've got Vortex who's playing as the Mongols. Not a terrible spawn that he's got. He's got the Uvu nice and close, which is going to definitely promote the use of pastures. Still got a bit of a while to walk when he wants to get to his gold, and you can see him dropping down that gur now. But uh, over on the other side of the map, we've got Kaio, who is playing as the English. The map, of course, is Altai, and Altai is a map that is known for the strength of the English, mainly because it is a very narrow battlefield. And so the English are able to control the narrative very well. At the same time, it is towards the center of the map more hilly than towards the edges so as an example you know if you're down here you're looking up the hill uh whereas if you're up here and you're looking down the hill I, th that, that really didn't work that well there I, I guess that kind of shows it to you right there and so line of sight obviously being a big thing english you know having long bows which have got you know extra range it just it just works out really well it synergizes very well and you're also very close to your opponent so they love to get into the enemy's base love to try and shut down those resources and i suspect that's what we're going to see out today but kayo interestingly going for a double scout opening up against the mongols here not something that you always see uh but uh obviously playing safe in this situation wants to avoid any potential tower rushes and now going to be looking to harass the villagers there is a sheep nearby so let's see if he actually goes to, to kill the sheep indeed he does you'll see it up or you it's uh, already got the the 12 damage here so you got to watch out for these villagers they do not mess around uh, so yeah there is a little bit of a bug at the moment you can see all of these have all of these villagers got the 12 damage indeed they do all of the villagers have got the 12 damage so he's got to be very careful fighting here he can actually one shot that scout if he's not careful oh my lord that scout almost going down down to six health so kayo geez louise you gotta be careful my friend but you can see him really looking to try and focus down this one villager he's uh he's coming in coming around he's trying his best you can see the daggers coming out now village are gonna have to be heading back towards that town center a bit of a stroll back towards it but we do have that council hall coming up in the base he's completely off gold i think he might be just going for an all-in here normally what you would see is a wheelbarrow opening as well as a mill you know well obviously oh drongo obviously there would be a mill if there's a wheelbarrow opening you dickhead uh nice try village are gonna go down so kayo definitely you know make Making, making, uh, making it work back here. Doing a pretty decent job. Gets the the one villager. <laughs> He's actually... Vortex going to be heading back in with his tail between his legs. Kayo reaching the feudal age at the same time. Vortex going to be slowly but steadily tapping away with the deer stones. And that is the consequence of not having the gold underneath the town center. So one of the things that we always talk about with Mongols is their start. How good is their start? This is a pretty good start. You've got your Uvu close. You've got your wood line close. You've also got deer right here. Uh, but you don't have your gold. And as a result, your gold... Being in a bad spot means that you lose a villager. And now you've lost a villager. So now you're behind. So Vortex already from the beginning of the game starts behind a villager. So not pretty at all. Khan going to be just scouting out his enemy. Looks like he's dropped down that uh, that fa scouting falcon. He's going to continue finding the lay of the land over on this side of the map. Uh, but going up with the deer stone. So no sneaky uh, trading shenanigans going to be happening today. Which is something that we've expected out of players on this map. But haven't actually seen throughout this tournament just yet. 
Almost coming through now with that age up. You hear the Khan shouting out as the uh, Longbowman actually gets picked up on the way. Uh, so a nice little uh, nice little win here uh, for, uh, for Vortex. Uh, but what is going on with the line of sight here? I, I've got no idea why line of sight is not coming. Uh, is this single tree blocking line of sight around this corner? Archer going to continue firing off against the Khan. Khan going to have slightly more damage. And you can see he's picking up this Archer for free or this Longbowman for free. And Kaiju just willing to give it away, which kind of seems crazy to me trading out with this Khan because you're not actually going to kill this Khan. It's going to get away on full H HP. It's going to come back. Uh, oh, sorry. It's going to get. It's going to go come back. Gosh, Drongo, get it together, man. It's going to leave on like 40 HP, but it will just come back eventually at full health. And there's nothing you can do about it. And now going to be harassing down those villages. You can see the longbow going to be coming out as well. Probably going to be looking to defend this position. And he's doing a great job of distracting at the same time. Outpost comes up on the front. Vortex still yet to see that one. Longbow's looking to do some damage here. He's going to have to move these guys around to the other side. Looks like he's actually got a very good spot. He's going to be so thankful for this position that he's got. It is almost impossible to hit that position. Khan going to be a escaping with 37 health you can see it is slowly but steadily healing up but look at this beautiful spot that is in here for vortex so vortex can move his gur right into this spot here i don't think there's any way that kaio is going to be able to hit it you can see the outpost is going to come up but it, wait oh the scouts behind oh my god look at this cheeky little scout he's like you know what i can see up that hill i can see over that hill i can see over that ridge i can see into your soul and i know exactly what you're thinking vortex and yes, Cocoa Puffs are delicious. Uh, but uh, I, I call them Cocoa Puffs, but in Australia, they're actually called Cocoa Pops. What are they called in your country? Cocoa Pops? Cocoa Pops? Cocoa Puffs? Maybe Pups. Wait, does that mean you're eating chocolate dogs? Oh, Jongo. I don't, I don't know. If, I think we're bordering on the, on the, on the illegal side with that. But <laughs> speaking of illegal side, that villager definitely going to be abiding by the laws now that he's, uh, he's fallen down and going to be, <laughs> oh, that poor thing. Now going to be, uh, outpost going to be in a bit of a difficult spot. Oh my God. Jeez Louise. Uh, but, uh, now Archer's going to be pushing out Longbow trying to run away as best as it can. You can see the reinforcements coming in and at the same time, remember what happened earlier. It all comes back to that Khan doing that early work, reducing the mass of longbows, distracting one longbow, killing their first one, you know, and slowly but steadily manages to whittle down this mass. And now the archers slowly, they do move out across the map, but they're doing a great job of forcing back his enemy. And so Vortex, despite only being on archers, is looking incredibly strong. Now we do have the outpost actually going to be firing down. Is it hitting villagers or just the Gur? I think it might just be hitting the Gur. Still yet to see those arrow slits and placements coming through, but he is on stone. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do see those three villagers coming through and getting pulled right now. Deerstone's moved up. Khan getting in on the action. And of course, he's sitting at full health because why wouldn't he? He heals up so damn fast, it seems. And now that outpost is going to be going down before the arrow slits come through, before the longbows can get into it. So very well played here by Vortex to be able to clear this position. So yeah, Vortex doing a really good job. The English outpost rush, it gets completely shut down and now he focuses down that that uh, scout loses that outpost and now he's in a great position vortex going to be putting down an outpost in his own base uh just to provide that yam network to his villagers to provide it to any of the units that are coming out and he's going to be able to move that deer stones across the map as he so pleases kayo on the other hand he is not doing the best there are no there is no wheelbarrow upgrade in fact there doesn't appear to be any single upgrade at the moment at all literally nothing no upgrades whatsoever he has gone for a very all-in build, and he has been countered by a single Khan. A single Khan changed this game, uh, just simply by distracting uh, the initial longbows that came out. So ideally, what should have Kaio done in that situation? As soon as he spots the Khan distracting, just move the longbow back. Just move the longbow back. Wait for a friend. Wait for a friend. You gotta, you, you gotta treat this like you know when you go into the toilet at school. You got a toilet buddy uh, that takes you to school and stands outside the toilet and waits for you. Just because you know th there's a potential that a magpie might come and potentially pick you up and take you and, and drop you, crack you from the heights of the of the school and then try and eat you. And that's that's a terrible situation. If, if, uh, probably not a magpie. Magpie's probably not that strong. Uh, to do it, I, I would say maybe like an eagle, a falcon. It depends how big you are. I mean, if you're if you're slightly larger than a koala, I think you're going to be okay. Uh, but we have some pretty big fauna in Australia. At least I think it's fauna. It could be flora. I never know the difference between the two. Jeez, <laughs> this has been a wild cast, hasn't it? We've been all over the place. But uh, speaking of all over the place, Kaio going to be back in the base here, just scouting out his enemy, seeing exactly what's coming and uh, we can actually see Vortex nose. So is he intentionally dropping these down just to give a little bit of fake intel over to his opponent? Who knows? Who knows? But Kaio going to be forced to run away. And you can see the archers now going to be taking out that scout. 
At the same time, beginning to push up and Horsemen going to be coming out. One of the weirdest things I've ever seen an English player do is make Horsemen. What the heck are they? Uh, but actually not a smart, or well, not a bad decision considering that his enemy is going for full archers. But one thing to keep in mind, he's got the Yam Network. Yam Network going to be able to speed these bad boys away. Look how much damage comes out on these guys. He's doing three damage a pop here. He's got 14 of them. So in total, he's doing 42 damage every volley. At the same time, there's 125 health on those bad boys. So three shots them. Actually, three shots them perfect. There's 126 damage on a, on a uh, on three shots, and they've got 125 health. So there you go. Vortex did the math. 14 archers is exactly what you need to three shot a horseman. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's going to be able to escape. If, if the horsemen do try and come in, Yam Network going to be able to buff those up. He's going to be able to do the maneuver arrow. And now Vortex going to be going up to the next stage, dropping down the market, dropping down the step redoubt. And now we see the archers. You can see the, the horsemen trying to come in and trying to siege down this position, but the archer's just going to be so effective against this. Throwing down the attack speed arrow. A little bit of a mistake, I would almost say. But you know what? It is Vortex. I think he's ranked number seven at the moment. Khan does go down, and now those archers are going to potentially get cleaned up in this position. So a little bit of an overextension, potentially. Horsemen continuing to come through, but he's doing a decent job of splitting at this point in time. Still, we see that outpost just standing strong. Towns are going to be firing down. Villagers still tapping away. Manages to keep alive the majority of these archers he didn't even need that maneuver speed arrow coming out he just simply uses the attack speed that's going to be able, enough for him to focus down and all the longbows get taken out kayo is in absolute shambles at this point in time and now we see the castle age has been reached i tell you what i'm i would not be surprised if kayo literally just tapped out right now i want to see the score let's have a look at the score oh Jeez, Luis, that is not pretty when it comes to the score. Okay, so why is it so bad? That is a great question. I'm glad you asked it. Let me explain for you. Well, Vortex has reached the Castle Age, and he's got a significantly significant military advantage, and he's probably got a villager advantage as well. Actually, it's not that big. It's a three villager deficit uh, going over to him. Uh, but now we can see that Kaio really looking to get stuck into the Second Age. He doesn't have that wheelbarrow tech doesn't have horticulture has only got six farms down we're at 12 minutes here he was all in and the very first attack failed the second attack failed what does he do now what does he look for he looks for a miracle and four horsemen are what he's going to be using uh to bring in that miracle interesting position on the hunt if you've ever seen mountain deer before uh, well you will know that they love to be in the mountains and these are your classic mountain deer which do mountain <laughs> all of them stacking in on top of each other uh very weird spot i remember i actually played a game against viper i was playing as the rus i'm pretty confident it was on altai as well and i only got uh I, I i only found three of the hunts the fourth hunt was in a spot like this but it had a winding pathway and it was from this side it was like from here it was a tiny little pathway it went up all the way like that and then came back up and the game was like yeah you know what a great spot for the second hunt is gonna be right up there and that's where it put it oh my lord dude and i, I think i even asked him i'm like did you ever find the, the your second hunt and i think he said no i'm pretty sure he said no something like that but uh anyway Anyway, uh, Kayo looking to do a bit of damage there. Obviously, no damage coming out. Vortex way too quick on that one. Uh, but he's got a huge amount of villagers. Going to be on that step redoubt. He's going to be looking to exchange out any of those extra resources as he sees fit. He's going to be able to spend them. He's got plenty of production out as well. So going to be looking to invest in lances. And now you can see the horseman going to be running around towards that wood line. At the same time, a bit of a, a raid going to be coming down over on the wood line. And at this point, even if, uh, even if Kayo just went full spears, I think he's still losers to the mass lancer uh just because it's mongol mass lancer and uh the economy is so much bigger with the mongols obviously the uvu are going to be adding in an extra the equivalent of two and a half villages uh at the same time the step redoubt just going to be adding in an extra eight villages at the moment uh market trading that over into whatever resource it is that you want so he is going to be absolutely fine and now we hear relics being picked up at the same time shaman going to be out looking to drop those relics off at the prayer tent uh, that's until it transforms into a monastery. That is correct. The prayer tent actually transforms into a monastery and then back into a prayer tent. Uh, so it, you would have thought it would be like transform into like a, I don't know, a caravan or something like that. But no, no, it transforms into a monastery. Uh, so yeah, when you hit this little button here, pack up, it, it changes the name, monastery. There you go. Uh, but uh, now we'll check in with Kaio. Kaio is actually going to be aging up. Uh, so a smart move here from Kaio, but the question is whether he's going to be able to survive the inevitable push that comes in from the Mongol player. So Vortex probably going to open up. This is what I, I would expect. Open up with just some light harassment with the with the uh, lancers. And when I say light harassment, I mean, you know, hitting the wood line, hitting the gold mine, hitting the farms at the exact same time with three lancers each. 
Uh, and then at the same time, he's going to follow up with improved siege engineering. And that's going to enable him to build those mangonels, build those traction trebuchets on the front line, slowly but steadily add in men at arms himself, add in uh, crossbows, and then look to try and slowly siege down his enemy. At the same time, he could just look to completely destroy his morale, which it looks like he's doing at the moment. Kaio sitting on 39 villages does have that second town center up now. So it is going to be a slow but steady burn back towards that top. At the same time, 47 villages now for Vortex, but the true number 47 uh, plus 8 for the step redoubt that he's got here. So you're talking about 55, throwing the relics that he's got as well. I think he's sitting on one relic at the moment. Uh, so probably looking close to about 60 villagers um, and compare that over to the 41 from Kaio. It's not looking pretty, but now continuing to siege down this. I'd love to know whether we've got improved siege engineering coming through right now. Where's the blacksmith? There it is. Uh, yes, we do. Siege engineering is already through and so is the improved version. Uh, so these guys are going to be able to create all of the siege that they wish uh, whenever they would like. Uh, but now Vortex is uh, is looking very strong. All these farms sitting vacant. You can see that the back of the town center is here completely vacant. So a little bit of a, an error coming through there uh, from Kaio. Typically, you'd like to see players uh, play around their town center a little bit more. But now coming back in, moving his villagers over to the farm. Veteran Khan going to be on the back line. Fires off that attack speed arrow. Slowly but steadily taking out the villagers. Look at the damage that's coming through. He takes out the first villager. Second villager in its uh, in its sights. Going to be going down. Archer's going to be... Or Longbow's going to be coming out. Managing to chase back that Khan and force it back. Uh, but now the army really starting to build up for Vortex at this point in time. I don't know how Kaio is going to be able to hold this. This push is going to be coming to shove very shortly. Decarbonization is complete. That is the plus two melee attack. And we'll check out Kaio. We'll see how he's doing. What's his production looking like? It is, uh, it's not looking pretty. <laughs> you can see he's got absolutely nothing in production with the exception of a single knight. And slowly he wants to add in more units, but it's not looking good for him. This is game number three in this series between these two guys. Kaio is holding on for a reason. That's because if he loses, he goes down into the loser brackets. And it's going to be such a hard fight to win out on this game. If you don't, if you drop down to that loser bracket, on the from the winner's bracket, it is so easy uh, to just keep your head above that water. But when you're in the loser's bracket, it is so cutthroat. And that's why Kaio is really holding on at this point in time. You can see the Lancer mass really starting to build up right now uh, for his enemy. That is a huge amount of Lancers. 11 Lancers coming out for Vortex. Vortex is Mongols, notoriously strong. And we see he's actually dropped down a second town center. Look at the gold that he's got in the bank as well. All of this gold. Going to be able to trade, be traded out for wood or for food. That's where he's gotten all of this wood for the second town center he just trades out and that's why you can see it's got that higher rate of uh, of purchasing but uh yeah now village is going to be moving forward as well dropping down the step redoubt on the gold mine the large gold vein also going to be capturing up the sacred site still yet to gather up the majority of the relics uh there is one actually i take that back there's two relics that only remain so he's got the majority he's got three relics in the bag uh, but he's going to be able to, to maintain a villager lead. Uh, 45 villagers for Kaio at the moment compared to 58 uh, for Vortex. Uh, keep in mind, he's already got uh, he's got the step redoubt here as well, which increases that villager count even further. When it comes to upgrades, he's got the wheelbarrow upgrade. Also got just the uh, the double broad axe upgrade for his lumber. But ideally going to move, th move this Gur away. Knight going to be coming through. Uh, manages to pick up a shaman, so a nice little investment there. Shaman's quite expensive, 150 gold. Uh, so takes that one down, but at the same time, he's going to need a lot more than that if he wants to turn the tide of this battle. Mangonel's also coming out. Second Mangonel getting dropped down here by the veteran archers in the middle of the map. Gur going to be moving back as it so should. And Villager going to be coming out to drop down, I suspect, an outpost or maybe even look to heal up this Mangonel. I wouldn't be surprised if he does pull three or four. Uh, villagers just to look to heal this position and now we see all of the lancers beginning to run in a bit of a raid on the back line managing to drop draw all the villagers into that town center they're going to be a-ok -okay. the outpost is going to be firing off with its sprinkled emplacement no sprinkled emplacement on this forward outpost though only on the back one at the same time it looks like that knight has been taken out and now moving back towards the base of Kaio. Vortex is slowly but steadily pushing in. We're going to enter into the cinematic mode so that we can witness this battle that is inevitably going to be happening in all of its glory because Vortex has had enough of Kaio. He says, my friend, it is time for you to die. And then he pulls his sword out and does that thing where like he points the sword and he's like, ha, ah, you must die. And now we see the push. Oh my God, there's so many villagers down there. Oh my God, there are so many villagers down there. Oh my, oh, I'm not going to make a joke about a massacre or anything like that, but... Jeez, Louise, that, that could have been bad. Villagers now coming out, pulling, getting pulled 
up against the Mangonels. Mangonels going to have to turn around and fire down upon the uh, the farms. Doing a fair bit of damage there. He's pulled a villager forward. He's going to be able to drop down that outpost to provide that yam network. At the same time, going to be able to heal up. And you can see all of the resources coming through to those Mangonels from that bonus. So the bonus that comes through, uh, the I said the, the, the sabotage bonus and... He just, Kyo just taps out. He says, you know what? I don't even have any military, bro. Uh, there's not even going to be a fight. I'm just going to concede. And good game gets called. Ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Vortex goes through to the next winner's round, winner's bracket round. Make sure you check out Golden Link. I'll leave a link in the description. I'll see you this weekend.